Hey, what is going on everybody? It is Nolan or the Optimistic Gamer here and welcome back to the Optimistic Survival Series. Today we are starting off on a brand new back patio that I built behind our house. We are finally making this back door a little bit useful before it was two blocks up off the ground. I could only leave through it, I could not get in. So I just continued the pattern of oak wood logs and our walls extended that out and turned this into a really nice back patio area. We will probably add some furniture later on or something like that, but this is how it looks for now. Same pattern with the hanging oak signs as well and torches for the lighting. But this is not the main focal point of today's episode. Today, we are doing something a little bit different than anything that we have done in the past. And that is we are going to be doing some planning for the future of this series. Now I said in the last episode that I was going to finish up all of the paths off camera and believe it or not, if you've been watching the series, it may be very difficult to believe I have actually finished all of the paths. Well, not all of them, but gotten a very, very good start on all of the paths going around. I still have a couple regions here and there to fill in, but for the most part, they are all there, so I will give you a quick tour of that, and you may have also noticed the wheat field is also finished. In fact, we can go ahead and fly up in this direction and get a nice overhead view of that. There's the whole wheat field in all of its glory. In fact, you may have seen that in the thumbnail for the lake. I think this wheat field was in fact finished by then. I have also built a stone brick wall right next to where the windmill is because we had this pretty steep drop off and I wanted to have a path along this back hillside. So the best way to do that was to have a level path and then a wall built up next to it. Otherwise we would just have this slanted or super narrow path and it wouldn't have looked nearly as nice in my opinion. So we have that going, and I realized I still haven't finished some minor aesthetics on the windmill. I will have to get that taken care of. But this path completely circles the wheat field right here. If I just quickly fly around it, you can see that all finished, and it goes back up in this direction. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do about this grass area right here. I think I may just leave it. I might even put a small shed or maybe plant a nice tree or something like that to have right here. But that is this side and then if we fly up on the roof of the storage building over here and land right here on the top, we will see the path is now extending towards our original zombie XP farm over in that direction and the path does extend that way as well from the wheat field. So today, we are going to be doing some planning, figuring out how we how we want to section off this region, this whole valley, of course, with the path not being finished going towards the boathouse or the village or even spawn for that matter, since spawn is over in that direction. It's going to be difficult to do some of that late stage planning but I'm not even too concerned about that anyway because we are just going to figure out the structures that we need in the immediate future for various farms and just other aesthetic details and things like that. So that's what we are working on today. We are going to use wool for this since it is relatively easy to use to break and we have all of those different colors as well as you can see in here which reminds me I have not checked the wool farm in a very long time oh boy all right well that's okay we don't need all of that extra wool anytime soon anyway because we have a couple large chestfuls of it already so we are going to color code all of these different regions and actually, I just remembered, before I get too far into this, I would like to ask all of you 
to leave some ideas and suggestions for buildings or various structures that we could have throughout the valley and get creative with it. I want to see some great ideas down in the comments. Of course, I will have more traditional buildings such as factories and restaurants. Of course, houses will also be a part of that, various inns, but I want creativity things like an aquarium or maybe a floral shop something like that just get very creative with it leave as many ideas as you want as you can see we have a very very large and vast valley that we need to fill in so the more ideas the better now, I was originally thinking of using colors for different categories, but I just decided to change that. We are just going to use all purple wool just to point out, sort of section off where buildings will be. And then we will decide later on, especially after I get all of those ideas rolling in, what we would like each section to be. So I'm thinking we will start right here on the corner. Now, we have our town hall up in that direction, the clock tower building. So I think right behind it, we can just change the door to this side. We can turn this into the sort of town center because we already have a nice flat space for it. We will just remove the trees and relocate them elsewhere and turn this into the central gathering area. So we will have maybe a nice big fountain right there, lots of small merchant stands and things like that. But over in this direction, kind of moving away from that, I think this is where our industry will happen. So factories and mills, manufacturing plants, all things like that we can put right here in this region. So I don't want to necessarily block off our storage building all that much, especially since we have a really nice back and side profile. All four sides of that building turned out great. So I don't want to take away from that. Of course, we don't really have to worry about that at the moment, just because we can build a one story structure right here and still be able to see that. And maybe we will leave this area right here for a walkway as well. So let's extend this going across in this direction now. And there we go. There's our first plot of land that we can have dedicated for a building or something like that. I think right here we will have some kind of sidewalk or something. Section it off and have another building adjacent to it. And then same thing with this one, it can just kind of follow the path a little bit. And once we get it to a spot that we are happy with, I will build this back. And same thing again, I think we will maybe go to the same level as the back of that plot right there. And then turn it going back in the other direction. And then we have a nice grass field right here, which I think we may leave. We can do some plants, maybe have a nice park or something. So I think what I will do is just a dotted line in this region that represents not a building, but rather some other development or empty space. There we go. So we have our first block, if you will, right along here and now we can work on this zone right here. And it will be the same thing again. We are just going to have a few different plots right here. Since we are getting close to the lake, we can maybe have another boathouse or something like that. Whether it's a industrial building or an actual residential house, it doesn't really matter the definition right now just a very square plot that we can have a building like that. We can always add to the shapes later on, but that works for now. I think right here it could be fun to have a corner building, maybe some kind of tall tower or something like that, perhaps even another clock tower if we so decide. And we might just end up connecting it into this, I forgot, it's shears, not a hoe for wool. We will just connect that 
into that building right there. I think that could make for a pretty cool design. And I think what I ultimately want for this region right here is a lot more compact buildings just to make everything feel a lot closer together. Not necessarily cluttered, but compact. So I'm thinking maybe something along the lines of this. Just buildings close to each other, again not compact, or not claustrophobic or anything like that, just very compact. And then I think we will have the path extend down in this direction for the boathouse. And right here, we sort of have a decision to make. Now what we could do is we could have the path go down into this large pit right here, or we could build a bridge. Now it wouldn't be a super tall bridge, and it would kind of limit us to what we can build in this area, but because of the length of this land, it would allow us to build a very long bridge with lots of detail if we wanted to. Now, it would go from roughly this point, I think, to there. Again, not very steep, but what we could do is we could build up this grass a little bit and kind of level off this area. So I think we will opt for that. We could maybe maybe fill this up with water as well if we wanted to, but that would be two very large lakes right next to each other, and I'm not really sure I want to do that, at least in the near future. So we will just continue to section this off and get a rough idea of how we want this to look. And there we go, there's our industrial zone. I think I will do different colors for zones is what I have decided on. So purple will be industrial. Now it's time to move on to the commercial zone, which is going to be cyan wool. Now I mentioned this is where the city center is going to be, the town center. So we will have various shops and restaurants and things like that surrounding the tree farm right here, which I think we can probably go ahead and get rid of. I'm a little hesitant to do this because, actually no, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it. Between now and the next episode, I will fill up all of our wood chests with wood, and then I will go ahead and get rid of this and we can move on with that. So I think this is also gonna re require some terraforming. We may actually hold off on this commercial zone for now and work on the residential area. And we'll just use cyan wool for that since I already have it in my inventory. I'm thinking of making this whole region residential as well as over here on this side of the lake and up here by the sniffers and this bridge that goes towards the village. I feel like it just makes a lot of sense to have it up in this direction. Plus we already have the windmill, we have the villager's house, and we have our original starter, ha starter house right down there. We also have the potion brewing hut, which again, that will probably stay as it is being a potion brewing place but we will have a much larger potion brewery in the future. So we can begin right up here atop the hill, and these ones, unlike the industrial area, I want to give these a little bit more shape because I want to actually have these be outlines for the various houses. So some of these will be a little bit larger than others, that's okay. I mean, just take a look at how big my house is. So that'll be one of the homes right there. Over on this side, we could put one over by the sniffers, give them a little bit more company if we would like to. We might even have room for a couple of homes right up here, sort of on the hillside going down with that path. So there's one, and then we can squeeze in one more right in here. We'll leave a little bit of room to get through as well. This will be a tiny little hut, but that's okay. We will make do with it. The villager's house is also a very small hut, 
and I think it looks kind of nice. The colors are definitely a little bit off, but it has a very cozy feel. And then actually, I never got around to this, but I want to finish out this sniffer farm and make it look a little bit nicer for our collection area so we can have that region sort of dug out and finished up with some wood and stone for the chest area. Now right here, I would like to do something a little bit unique, something a little more interesting, a little bit fun. What I want to do is have some of these houses along this cliffside with balconies or even the walls themselves hanging over the edge of the balcony. So we will extend this wall out a few blocks past the edge of the cliff not too far though, I don't want to necessarily take away from the bridge that we have, but it's a smaller bridge, we're going to have much more detailed, so honestly I am not too concerned about that. But we will just have a row of huts, I guess, following this cliffside right here. And I went too far, we are a little too close to the windmill now, but I will just get rid of this last row. And then we will turn it to go back towards the path and follow the same pattern once again. And then we have a little bit of room right here for another smaller gravel path or something like that to access the main one. This tree I will probably end up get, getting rid of, but we will leave it for now, it is not in our way. So that takes care of this, again, those are going to sort of hang over the edge, it's gonna have a pretty neat look to it. I can sort of picture it in my mind already. And then I think right here we will reserve this for another path to go up to the top of this hill because at the top of this hill it's pretty flat and the slope is gradual enough to have buildings on, so we will leave it as is, we won't level it or anything like that. And then we will have another row of homes right along this path across from the wheat field. And with all of our residential spots complete, that looks something like this. So we have a few plots for houses right down here along the wheat field, and then of course the ones up here that I showed you. I do also want to clarify before I get too far into all of this, don't worry, this is not turning into a build series, unless that's what you wanted, in which case I apologize in advance. This is still going to be a lot of survival gameplay, so you don't have to worry about that going anywhere. I just wanted to get all of these areas marked out so we could kind of envision what this valley would look like in the future as we play on and sort of what we need to do in terms of gameplay to make all of this happen. So again, don't worry, the gameplay is not going anywhere. And of course, a very long-term survival world would not be complete without some kind of museum, which will be represented by Magenta Wool. See what I did there with the with the M? Yeah? Okay. So this museum will probably be somewhere right here close to the town center. I feel like that just makes the most sense. Plus, it's very close to where we settled and where we started because we built our house, and then I think we built the villager's house actually, and then the barn maybe, or the storage building, well the town hall now, the clock tower, and then our house, but this was just kind of the collection of the first set of buildings. It is the literal town center, and we are expanding outward, so I think if we had the museum somewhere around here, it would just make sense. So I think we will have it across from the old storage building, and we will not have this obstructed by any buildings between this and the storage building. So this will be a pretty large open region, but we will make do with it. Of course, we can extend the town hall 
not the town hall, the museum towards the town hall by a little bit as well. And it will even be over this cave entrance right here, which looks unexplored. We could definitely have some pretty neat additions to the museum utilizing that as well. And that will be the rough outline for the museum. It will definitely be a creative mode first build when I finally do that, but we will not be tackling that project for many, many episodes. Plus, we need a little bit more history here in the valley before we can say that we deserve a museum. So now it's time for the fun part. We are going to grab some signs and we are going to essentially mark all of these plots. And we are going to do the buildings or farms or whatever we want it to be we will actually include that in the sign name. So I kind of have to think about what we want this area to be. Now, I know we already have a lot of different production farms and everything like that up here in the valley. We have the super smelter right in there, which I never actually got around to finishing this building and it still is my least favorite in the valley as it stands. It just needs a little bit more detail, that's all. But that's not to say that we can't move the super smelter or have a second one just for the sake of filling in the industrial area. And I think that's what we will put right here. We will have this be our super smelter. And I'm using dark oak signs just because that's what I had an abundance of from our old storage building. And then right next door to the super smelter, I think it would make sense to have a weapon smith. So it kind of, some of these will follow patterns similar to the villagers occupations, just because those are the blocks and farms that we have available in the game. Of course, some of them will be completely unique, like right over here, I think right next to the lake. And actually, I just got a very, very great idea. What we may end up doing is have this spot right here turn into a dam and then right here we will have a very deep valley not super deep but deep enough to have a river that flows all the way over to this region right here and then these buildings will be built above that river sort of suspended on an arch i think that's what we will do which means this building right here in this plot will be a hydro plant. I think that will work out really well for us. And then on the topic of energy plants, this is one of our larger plots, but it is obstructing the view of this storage building. So while this would make for a great power plant, I think we will put the power plant right here. And we can always extend this back as far as we need. And we also have a lot of room in this direction as well. So I think this will be a great spot for the power plant. I think what we will put right here is a lumber yard because we can do an indoor outdoor hybrid for this. It won't have to be super tall. We will still be able to get a great view of that backside of the storage building. In this spot right here, I think we will just put a mine entrance, but we will make it very elaborate and complex. We still have a few more plots to fill. I think right here on the water with all of this gravel and maybe sand, I don't know. Not really sure of the lore of the valley, but right here would be a great spot for a concrete plant. Just somewhere where we can come and create all of that concrete and those materials. Right next door, very related to it, a mud plant. So we have the manufacturing of concrete, mud, and then right here, of course, is our hydro plant where we will have a dam and that, well, maybe this will be the dam, I'm not sure. 
but we will just see again. This stuff is all very, very late game. I just want to plan it now so we can begin to think about it. Right here, a weapon smith, and next door to that will be the super smelter. And this will have both blast furnaces and normal furnaces. And then the power plant right here. Now, this is partially aesthetic, but also partially use. So in this building, we will have lava dripping from dripstone and various sources of energy like that. Maybe we will even have some coal or built up in piles as well. We could even have redstone clocks and things like that that are giving off a redstone tick every once in a while. So that is the industrial area now. We also have one more spot right here that we need to fill in, and I'm trying to think of something that we are still missing. And that is where all of you come in. So that is where I'm going to end today's episode. I really hoped you enjoyed it. I hope that you are looking forward to the future of this world as much as I am. Like I said, leave your ideas down in the comments. I really want to hear what you have to offer, whether it's for the industrial area, the residential you know, for that, things like windmills and lighthouses, just various structures that can also double as homes. And then, of course, the museum that is kind of already established. But give me some ideas for exhibits as well that we could feature in there and the commercial area as well. So shops and restaurants, like I said, a floral shop or an aquarium, just recreational things and things to do in the valley, and preferably things that are fun to build. As with many of these builds in this world, I will do tutorials for a lot of them, so this is your chance to have that double as a request, so definitely leave some comments on what you would like to see in this world. But make sure you are subscribed if you aren't already so that you don't miss out on daily content as soon as I publish it, and leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Check the description for some more important information, links, how to contact me, all of that good stuff. And with all of that being said, comment, like, subscribe, remember to stay optimistic, and I will see all of you tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Bye!